Today, I want to talk about two words that we often put together as a phrase. In fact, I bet it's a phrase that you've used in just the past few days. It's, it's a phrase that most people use. And the phrase is, most people. Most people, quote unquote. Like I said, I bet you used it recently. I definitely have. And I've been trying to wean myself off it because of a few reasons. Now first, you cannot separate generalizing from learning. In our culture, we have a collection of ideas around the idea of learning. What learning is, what learning isn't. And generalizing, learning that certain things happen, not always, but often together, and then generalizing from that is a core part of the idea of learning. You generalize constantly. You generalize when you grab the keys to the car and the idea is that the keys are gonna work today. Well, someday they don't. You generalize when you cross the street that if you look both ways and there's no car coming, you're probably safe, but sometimes you're wrong. So generalizing, going from the individual to the general is a core part of learning. And it seems to serve us very well in many ways because the alternative, it seems, is to treat each moment, each learning opportunity anew. Each moment as an absolutely unique moment that once again we have to sort of, I don't know, throw chance to the wind and hope for the best. And so we generalize instead to get through the day. Now, it seems to serve as well with inert things, with things like cars, with things like, I don't know, baking bread, uh, something like how to work the remote for your TV, etc. okay? But when we start generalizing around people, we all know this is when we can get into real trouble. This is when we can do a real disservice to the absolute uniqueness of each of us. But there's some phrases that are so innocuous that seem, you know, not negative at all that they still sort of fly under the radar. There's a bunch of phrases you don't use and you don't use them around people in generalizing because they explicitly spit in the face of the beautiful uniqueness of, of people. And you and I both know better than that. But there are phrases that are implicit. And I think it's the implicit phrasing that ultimately they are the most damaging because they, they, they influence the conversations we have in a culture and in between two people about two people. They influence the conversation in more subtle ways. And in that regard, they're uh, insidious, right? They work their dark influence. They twist the conversation more subtly. And so this phrase about most people, well, yeah, and you think, well, wait a second, what happens if I've been saying most people mean well? And frankly, I think it's a really important idea to go through your day and to make the assumption, basically uh, an article of faith, that the majority of people you're going to encounter that day are, for the most part, trying their best. I think that's really important. At the same time, the phrase most people, even if you're saying something positive, let alone negative, I think it's inherently dangerous. Most people. I'll tell you this too, that most people, in a sense, don't exist. The phrase, the idea, well, most people. Because, of course, people are all individuals, for starters. And if you want to group people together, I mean, probably the truest, most accurate, most faithful way to use the phrase would be maybe to say that most people are most people. So I've reduced it to a statistic. And that's really by uh, neutering it, by removing all the fangs from it, all the content. That's where I think it's the most innocuous, but also kind of useless. So think about that. Consider that the next time you're tempted to group people together. And again, I don't think it's about being trying to be positive or negative. It's the grouping. It's the inherent act of grouping people together that has done so much damage and continues to do so much damage in the world and 
yeah, it's lazy and dangerous and uh, blinding. That's the big thing, you know, it really can be very blinding.